Good afternoon everyone. Welcome to the Cross River Rail Experience Centre in Brisbane. My name is Keith Allen, I'm an architect and I'm here today to talk to you about station design. I hope everyone's having a fantastic science week and we're going to cover a few things today that's a little bit different uh, around station design, tunnelling and to talk about you know, Cross River Rail and the fantastic project that it is. The, just a little bit as a lead in I guess is to tell you who we are, how we fit into the project and I guess the organisation. So I'm an architect from a firm called Hassel and we are designing the stations, the architecture, the urban design and the landscape. So we fit into the Pulse Consortia. So we were the consortia that were selected to design and deliver the project and obviously that's a very complex uh, organisation as you can see from the diagram. Uh, on the screen we've got finance partners that are a key part of the project, we have design and construct organisations and importantly there's a facilities management part of the contract as well because the work that we are doing uh, will actually be uh, managed by our FM contractor for the next 25 years. A uh, little bit of a lead in just to give some context around the project because I know a lot of people listening and watching may not have been across some of this detail before. We actually first started working on this project probably 10 years ago now, whenever a lot of the, the early planning work was happening to identify some of the issues that were occurring within the rail network, some of the capacity uh, realizations that uh, by the time we were reaching you know, 2021, 22, there was actually going to be a lot of congestion on the network. But I guess the way that the project has grown and changed over the last 10 years is really exciting from our perspective because the project is now not just about solving that real problem, it's actually about delivering economic growth, delivering new places within the city and really starting to uh, change the nature of Brisbane and certainly uh, the, the access that we have to really great public transport. Uh, from a regional point of view, uh, it's a very unique place, South East Queensland. It's very long, it's linear, all of, the all of the development kind of hugs the coast. So we've got this transport corridor that's over 200 kilometres in length. Now that covers you know, something like seven or eight local council areas. There's six major lines across that network. And Queensland Rail uh, manage over 130 stations as part uh, of the public transport uh, network. This project, Cross River Rail, uh, we're going to just hone in a little bit into the city. So Cross River Rail is actually nearly a 16 metre long project, so it's absolutely massive. The impact of the city, uh, the scale of the project, and it's, bro it's broken down into two sections. So there's actually two contracts delivering uh, parts of the new station design and infrastructure. Our team is part of the tunnel station and development aspect, so that's really the major new tunnel and stations through the CBD. You can see from the dark blue line on the screen the extent of the new tunnel that's going to run through the city. So that's nearly six, six kilometres of uh, twin tunnels. Uh, the dive structure at the southern end is at Bogger Road, so that's where the trains start to go below ground. Major new station at Bogger Road underground and that will connect into the existing network. So a lot of interchange capacity and movement will be happening in that location. Right, we then move through to Wollongabba. Everyone's familiar with the Gabba as a stadium and if you've driven past that site recently certainly the construction work is very front of mind. So that uh, major new regeneration, a new station that's going to service the Gabba Stadium. Uh, we cross the river into the city, new station on Albert Street, the first new station in over a hundred years. So it's really exciting uh, to be part of the design and delivery of that new location. And finally, Roma Street. The new uh, development at Roma Street, the new station, it's really going to change that part of the city. And Roma Street really will become uh, the new Grand Central of uh, Brisbane. On the screen at the moment is a cross section through the city. So that starts to give you a feeling of some of the complexities that we deal with. Uh, the topography is quite challenging, we've got a deep river crossing, so a lot of the stations are actually uh, quite deep in terms of Australian benchmarks, particularly Albert Street. Uh, we're looking there at around uh, nearly 30 metres 
from street level down to platform level. So how we deal with that, that movement of people uh, is actually quite complex. But one of the things that really, I guess, captured our imagination whenever we were going through a tender process on this job, and uh, now that we're actually delivering uh, the design and the work has started, it really is a once in a generation opportunity. It is going to completely change the face of Brisbane, the perception of public transport, the access to public transport, the new public rail, the new stations, and all of that uh, development that will happen around those precincts. Brisbane's going to be a very different city in five years whenever this project is up and running. So the, the next few slides, I thought it would be really interesting actually just to talk through what makes a great station because again a lot of people may not actually be familiar with international benchmarks. What are the key principles that we actually consider whenever we are designing underground stations? They're quite unique buildings, they're quite complex. And one really important aspect that we always start a conversation with is the civic nature or the civic presence of railway stations. And this is a fantastic image on the screen. It's actually a design competition that, that we won in Melbourne for the redevelopment of Flinders Street Station uh, back in 2013-14. And it really gets across that idea about how important it is that a station has got a presence and a really strong face out into the city. And in the context of Brisbane, it's actually really interesting because over time, uh, and Central Station and Roma Street are really great examples where development has happened around the station, it's happened in front of the station. You know, whenever the transit centre was constructed, we really lost that public identity of Roma Street uh, along the edge of that street and city edge. So a lot of our work and a lot of our thinking is actually trying to reconnect that public transport back to the street and really elevate the importance of that uh, from a city interface point of view. Uh, Olympic Park Station in Sydney, a really great example of where the architecture complements the movement and the entry sequence to the station. Quite unique in its own right because of the role that Olympic Park played with the Olympics uh, but it's still a fantastic example of where there's a really dominant arch structure. It's really clear how you approach the station, how you move in, how you move down the platform. And it's a really uh, useful reference point to us whenever we're considering those types of uh, aspects of design. Natural Light. Uh, this is a project built by Metro by Foster and Partners in Europe. And a really tremendous uh, example of how Natural light can be brought in from the surface through quite a small opening, right down through a VT shaft uh, to platform level. So you will see in a lot of the images and the way I talk about Cross River Rail uh, in the future slides around, we're always trying to get that natural light as deep as we possibly can uh, down into the station. Epping to Chatswood in Sydney, another project uh, that we delivered probably about 10 years ago now. And I think this is a great image that just shows the importance of the, 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 the sequence of spaces that you move through as you enter an underground environment. It's very unfamiliar to most users, so setting up that sequence, it's really clear, direct, intuitive. When you come off the escalator, out of the lift, you can see your destination. It's really easy to move through uh, that environment. And Canary Wharf Station in London, probably one of the most referenced projects uh, for architects all over the world whenever they design uh, new stations. A fantastic example of volume, scale, the clarity in the layout, the legibility, you can see where you want to go. It's a really great reference uh, whenever we are uh, designing, particularly Cross River Rail. And I mean, we don't have the opportunity for such a large volume on, on this project, but certainly all of those principles are really pertinent in our thinking. And public art, it's really interesting how just that a really bold move around how you integrate public art into a station completely changes that environment that you're in, particularly in that underground uh, location where some people can feel a little bit uncomfortable and creating that opportunity, that moment within 
a, an underground environment that completely redefines the feeling and the experience of people in those spaces. And finally, just in this little sequence, is the, the idea around being customer focused. Uh, Queensland and Australia is a very car dominant place and a really uh, important part of our work is thinking about how can we deliver the customer experience and, and I guess the, the ease of private vehicle use, transfer that into a public transport network that it sometimes can be congested, sometimes it feels very tight. Uh, so it, I'll talk a little bit more about a uh, customer focused design in some of the later uh, slides. The, the next few slides, I thought it would be good to just talk briefly about this project actually because it's probably the most recent uh, benchmark of underground station design in Australia. Uh, it's a project I worked on for three years, uh, Sydney Metro Northwest and it's amazing when you look at this photograph, you actually don't get the feeling for the complexity and the amount of infrastructure that is below ground. And I think that's uh, very relevant to Cross River Rail where you know, we're probably only getting about 5% of the project is actually visible above ground. But the amount of infrastructure and effort and design work that needs to go into that uh, is quite significant. Uh, on this project, the architecture is really striking. It's very relevant to the place, the location of the project. Uh, this project runs through the northwest of Sydney where we were actually putting the project through some quite sensitive landscape areas. So the idea that the architecture can respond to place uh, clearly identifies that entry sequence, that movement through uh, a gate line, and the architecture is actually complementing that movement. It's expressive, there's lots of natural light, it's really simple and intuitive uh, as you move through some of those spaces. Uh, this is the next photograph just in that sequence as you move through below ground and again just that idea that you can see your destination You've got a line of sight from the entry down through the ticketing concourse and right down the platform. During the day, it's flooded with natural light and a really great customer experience uh, moving through those spaces. Once you're down then in the concourse level, uh, the concourse itself is generous, it's simple, it's clean. There's very little signage because there's no need. The, the architecture actually responds to the, the movement route, the desire line that you want to have. Uh, through the station. This is a view looking back up towards the entry from below ground and if you think back to that image that, uh, that I showed of Bilbao Metro, you know, just that idea of really great natural light coming down, flooding the side walls of the shaft and really complementing that movement route through. And I shot a little bit deeper back into the station and I think this is a really incredible space because of the, the impact and the effect of the skylights above. Uh, a really strong public art theme uh, was developed as part of this project. It was all about colour, reference to place, and it really does uh, make quite a fundamental difference to the way that the customers actually experience the project. So the next few slides, we're going to get a bit closer now uh, to the actual project in, in Brisbane, and I think this is a really fantastic slide to start with because it's quite deceptive the scale of the project that we're actually working on. And the, the left hand side of the slide are all of the recent buildings that have been constructed in Brisbane. They are 270, 275 metres tall. They're really dominant elements within the skyline. And if you took the Cross River Rail stations and actually stood them vertically, they're larger than the tallest buildings in the city. So that just gives you a feel on the scale, the complexity of taking those, delivering them you know, 35 metres below ground and then moving at times 20, 30,000 people uh, through the station environments. It's, it is quite complex and a massive task uh, for the city. One of the things that we always start uh, discussing, uh, particularly at the beginning, the early planning stages of a major project like this, is the station typology. It's the type of platform arrangement 
that we deliver below ground. And I think this is a very relevant part of the conversation uh, following on from the discussion that Jeremy Kruger had earlier in the week about mining activities, the way that the TBM comes through the project. And the, the different typologies, the top left is a single span. So that's one big cave or cavern that everything fits into. And that's a very common uh, typology. And it's certainly one that we are using on Cross River Rail uh, across a number of the stations. The top right is a binocular station, uh, very common in the UK, uh, particularly the London Underground. If you've traveled through the tube, you'd be familiar with moving down through quite small, narrow passages and then popping out onto a single side platform. Typically used whenever there's a lot of in-ground services or a lot of building basements to negotiate. The bottom left is a, a large diameter tunnel. That really uh, uh, was, was first used in a really great context in Barcelona, uh, Line 9 in Barcelona, where they had really poor ground conditions. So the stations were very deep. And the idea that there was a single large diameter TBM that went through that whole project and everything fitted within that. So that's about the size of the road tunnels that you would see uh, through Claim 7, Airport Link, etc. in Brisbane. Uh, the, the bottom right hand typology is a cut and cover box, again very common and we are utilising that within Brisbane. So that's effectively where a large trench uh, is excavated in the ground. There'd be piling to create the retention structures and then you excavate down uh, from above. Big impact in terms of existing services and it does uh, require quite substantial uh, clo road closures etc uh, while that construction activity is happening. So a few diagrams just to explain that the cavern typology, so this is the most common one that we're using in Brisbane and uh, this is a, an example of what we're doing uh, actually at, Roma, or sorry, at Albert Street where we've got a mine cavern that runs for 300 metres below uh, Albert Street. Typically with a station like this you would have a service building at either end of the cavern. That would in enclose all of the fire egress stairs, tunnel ventilation systems, all of that servicing kit that needs to go with the station. And then centrally we would have a, a single point of access up the street. So that's where all of the escalators and all of the movement would happen from platform to street. On this project, we don't have the ability to have those buildings at the end of the cavern because it's a very uh, restricted CBD. There's not a lot of sites available for that access in those buildings. So we've grouped all of those services together into one building uh, and consolidate that onto one uh, lot. So that, that's the building that will be happening on the corner of Murray Street and Albert Street. Now, one of the benefits of uh, that strategy is that you can take all of that equipment and effectively slide it up and down the cavern. So what we've done is moved all of that uh, accommodation to one end of the station, co-located with escalators, etc., and then added in a second one much closer to uh, Elizabeth Street. So we're getting this dual catchment, this dual entry arrangement at Albert Street that really starts to deliver much better accessibility and access uh, to the, the public transport. Uh, this is a 3D view straight out of the model. So you can see uh, below ground is the, the fully mined cavern for the full length. We've got the major entry uh, to the left hand side of the screen which is on the corner of Murray and Albert. So you know, we've got uh, five escalators switchbacking around each other as they move from street down to uh, the cavern level. And then at the northern end, we do have that second entry, which provides much greater uh, access to the, the shopping mall end of the city. So there'd be a really quick connection from Queen Street Mall uh, down into that entry. You can see from that cross section the way that the cavern stretches the full length. So there's actually two levels within that excavation. There's the platform level, uh, which is where you'll be boarding and exiting the trains. And then one level above that is what we refer to as a mezzanine. So that actually allows you to have really great distribution of passengers. It allows you to move people really quickly. It gives you a lot of options 
on how you move people through what is actually quite a constrained uh, space below ground. The, the next few slides is just looking at another project example. Uh, just to, to give you a feel on what if some of those spaces are actually like underground whenever the mining activity is happening. Uh, this is a cavern from Epping to Chatswood in Sydney, so it's a very similar profile in many ways as to what will we, we will be delivering on Albert Street for Cross River Rail. Uh, Jeremy talked through in a lot of detail earlier in the week around how the TBMs work, uh, and he had some really fantastic videos of those coming through the, the cavern. So if you missed that presentation, you really should jump back onto the website and have another look. But the, the caverns are actually mined out by a piece of equipment called a road header. And again, there's been some really great photographs coming through onto the, the social media uh, through the Cross River Rail LinkedIn website, showing these pieces of equipment being dropped down into the shafts and actually starting that, uh, that mining activity. So they start very slow and they end up creating this massive cave and cavern that is, you know, 30, 30, 25 meters below ground. So this is an image uh, of where the construction activities are just starting uh, in that cavern in Sydney. You can see the base slab, they're starting to form up the platform and the columns are uh, starting to come up. So it's a really incredible, you know, the scale of that space below ground. This is the next sequence then where a lot of the linings, a lot of the internal structure all start to be constructed in that environment. It takes very careful design and construction planning because it is such a unique space. It's not somewhere that people are familiar going into and actually working full shifts below ground. There's no natural light down in a lot of those caverns. And finally, this is a, a shot uh, looking down the platform uh, off a uh, Macquarie Park station. And you know, really high quality fit out finishes and it just gives you that feeling, that impression uh, of the amount of work that actually happens behind the scene to create these spaces before they're ready for trains to run and customers to move through. One of the other key influences, uh, particularly for our work from an urban design perspective, is the city context. This project has a very high aspiration in terms of that uh, economic stimulus aspect, the new precincts, the new streets, the new public realm that is being created. And this is a really great view of the project through that CBD section that just shows the footprint and the impact that this project is actually going to touch. And we'll go through uh, each of the stations one by one in a few slides. The, 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 the next few slides are uh, an example of Roma Street, where again, it's some of those key drivers, the key influences that uh, we have in our thinking whenever we are designing the stations. This is a plan of Roma Street. You can see Roma Street running through uh, horizontally. The existing station is at the top uh, of the page. And the things that we consider in our design process, the visibility. How do you actually view the station from a distance? When you're walking down George Street, what do you see at that vista? How do you organize the architecture, the entry sequence, so that we create those really clear and legible entry routes that we were describing and discussing in some of the earlier slides. Pedestrian connectivity is really important that it's clear, it's simple, the movement routes are direct, the interchange needs to be extremely intuitive and you know, Roma Street is particularly complex in this regard because every public transport mode in Queensland is going to pass through this station. We've got the travel trains that go north to Cairns. We've got the suburban rail network, the surface bus network, the future Brisbane Metro Cross River Rail. Everything is going to come together in that one location in the center of that image. So having a really direct, clear movement route into the station is really critical. It's really important. This is a, a view looking at Roma Street, I, which really just gets across that idea that the architecture can complement the wayfinding. We're pulling the building out to the street. We're really starting trying to create that civic interface that I was talking about earlier in the presentation. This is a view from George Street, 
uh, looking down towards the new station pavilion. That's where the old transit centre used to be located. So this precinct is going to really completely change as all of those uh, developments come online. Some of the other influences, uh, engineering uh, integration obviously is, is really critically important in those underground locations. And the mechanical and electrical si systems are probably the most complex. So getting these identified and positioned really early in the project, making them work with the typologies that we're going to deliver is really critical. Uh, this is an image uh, which shows the air movement that actually goes through the station uh, under normal and emergency mode operations. So we've got these really large fan rooms that sit in the base of the building to the left hand side. So they're right on the lower uh, levels of the building. So they push and pull air through the station in and out of the running tunnels depending on what the operational mode is. So the blue line is the supply air route uh, that pushes fresh air into the station, the running tunnels under an, under an emergency mode. And the red line is where we actually extract smoke out of the running tunnels and out of the station in a really safe way if there is an emergency in that environment. Pedestrian modelling is really another fundamental aspect that we, we consider really early in the design process. So working out how do we move, uh, at, at Albert Street we've got 22,000 people moving through this station within one hour, within that AM peak. So there's a lot of very sensitive testing around escalator arrangements, lift arrangements, so that we can actually move those numbers of people through in the most efficient and safe manner that we can. Right, this is a diagram that, that comes out of the pedestrian modelling team and we've got very similar uh, you know, diagrams and modelling that, that is done by all of the other engineering disciplines and it helps us identify where the hotspots are in the design, where do we need to create a little bit more space, how do we refine the station planning to optimise all of the pedestrian movement. Uh, and finally, in this, in this sequence, the, uh, just really talking about the importance of services coordination. It's probably our biggest challenge on projects like this, where the below ground spaces are extremely tight. It's very expensive to construct and mine in that environment. So we need to very carefully plan, coordinate and position all of the services uh, during that process. The section looks very simple when you look at an architectural diagram like this, but in reality, uh, this is a shot that comes out of our BIM model. Uh, very complex, lots of uh, really detailed coordination required. And you can just see the number of layers of engineering disciplines that we actually coordinate with uh, as part of our role as architects on the project. So why involve an architect? That's probably the question I actually get asked most whenever I say I'm working on Cross River Rail. A lot of people associate this project with engineers only and they're actually quite surprised whenever they meet an architect who's actually involved. The, the, the thing that's really, I, I guess, uh, pertinent to us on this project and something that really excites me about my involvement is the way that we talk about and the, de the way we deal with customer we bring a different mindset and a different level of thinking to what are you know, usually engineering-led and dominated infrastructure projects. So everything that we are trying to do in our work is trying to elevate the user experience and the importance of the customer because at the end of the day we need to grow patronage, we need to make these projects successful at a different level. Now one of the ways that we do that is that we do a lot of research at the beginning of the project and particularly on, on Cross River Rail, we actually did a piece of research before we started doing any design. And we brought in a number of partners that we work with and that are part of Hassel. Uh, Brickfields, I did some really fantastic research around passenger numbers, around demographics of public transport use in Australia and in Brisbane. And then we used the Free State team to try and mould an experience-led design process out of that research and you know the outcomes and that experience uh, it was really fascinating and 
this is a, a diagram that just shows, I guess, the demographic use of public transport within Australia. And the red curve is typically what you would see uh, in, in, in Australia, and particularly in Sydney and Melbourne, where the, the patronage, the high use uh, zones, is really that younger age group. So the 19, uh, the teens, right through to kind of late 30s, early 40s. The older age groups, the, the uptake on public transport does start to diminish, so it's a very typical curve. In Brisbane, it's actually the reverse. It's quite odd in many ways, where the higher patronage uh, age groups is actually from that 45 to 70 years age group. So a lot of our thinking around uh, customer-led, around experience design, is actually trying to change the perception of public transport use and get a lot more of that younger demographic uh, out of cars uh, onto public transport and really maximise the value of the infrastructure. And it's interesting, whenever you actually delve into the research in a little bit more detail, the, the, the really uh, fantastic, I guess, learning that we had from it is that millennials are not actually interested in physical things. Three out of four millennials would prefer to spend their money on an experience rather than buy something. So that starts to have a big impact on how we consider the architecture and the space and the design of this project. It's really important to us that we're delivering places rather than just, and so much more than just a, a public transport or a train running through the city. We start to think differently around uh, the aspects, the unique aspects of southeast Queensland. Uh, the climate that we have here is really amazing. It's subtropical. We live half of our lives outside and it's a very unique environment compared to many other uh, parts of Australia and the world. Uh, the other aspect is the landscape itself. Uh, there's a really beautiful subtropical lush landscape in Brisbane. This is an image from Botanic Gardens where someone's just sitting underneath a tree uh, having their lunch. But it's interesting when it comes into summer how uh, the public actually use shade and canopy and tree in a completely different way. You actually uh, hug the edges of public spaces. In summer you try to find all of those little spots that provides that shade and shelter from both rain and sun. So our team thought it would be really interesting to try and I develop an architecture that responds to the uniqueness of Brisbane, how do we actually translate that idea of shade sitting under a tree into a canopy a design? And again, just thinking back to a lot of those early images around how do we get natural light through, but how do we still provide the weather protection to the elements that we need? So we developed this really simple idea around a series of canopies. And that's the four stations, Roma Street on the left, going through to Bogger Road on the right. So the unique aspect of the project at surface was a very identifiable canopy that responded to that local place, but was also identifiable as a Queensland, or sorry, as a Cross River Rail station. And then we developed that idea further, moving down below ground. Moving uh, people below, you know, 30 metres below ground, it's a very unique experience for Brisbane. It's not something that public transport users are actually familiar with in this environment. So we developed these ideas about what if we considered a sequence of spaces or rooms that are appropriately scaled, that are much more familiar to people in this part of the country rather than delivering some of the, uh, you know, the tunnels or the tubes that are quite common, particularly through, again, uh, London and Europe. The top left-hand image is a fantastic design outcome for Crossrail, the new project that will be opening soon in London. And the top right uh, is Munich Metro. So we didn't feel it was appropriate to actually deliver that type of uh, architecture below ground. We were very interested in the idea of the Queensland vernacular, the verandas that we all love uh, as part of our houses, the idea of expressing the structure, having articulated suffetes, was really interesting on how we then reinterpreted that into the underground environment. Uh, this is a shot out of a virtual reality model 
that we built as part of our design development and consultation process. And you can just see that simple lean back of the edges, the repetitive joint system, the articulation of the rafters. There's a really good connection between what we are comfortable with above ground and what we are comfortable with below ground. All right, this is a shot again from the VR model at a platform level so you can really see that clear identity that is going to come across as part of this project. It's very unique, it's not like uh, anything that, that we've got uh, around some of our other transport projects and I think it's going to be a really strong uh, architecture and design outcome for this project. So finally, uh, the last bit of the presentation I want to run through is just give everyone an overview and some insights into the stations as we run through the four of them. Uh, Bogo Road starting at the south side, sorry, the southern end of the tunnel. So this is where the, the existing railway line actually connects into the tunnel. The dive structures will just be down on the bottom right hand side of the image. The trains will pass into the tunnel and the first stop will be Bogo Road Station. You can see on the image the, the eco sciences and the Bogo Road Jail will be familiar to most people uh, within that precinct. So we're creating this new Cross River Rail underground station in the heart of that precinct. We are delivering new public realm connections. It's going to connect to the hospital. We are providing a really fantastic interchange opportunity into the existing rail network. So this will become a, a very important and well used station at the southern end of the project. The, the typology, if you think back to those diagrams that I had earlier, the station typology or the, the excavation type below ground, it's, it's quite straightforward and this one actually in terms of the cut and cover box to the southern end and a mined cavern towards the north. So those experiences, the natural light, the simple intuitive wayfinding when you go through the gate line, start your movement through the escalators, there's really only one way down into the station. So we're setting up that framework of simple, direct movement routes that really diminish a lot of reliance on signage and wayfinding. This is a view from within the VT shaft. So we're looking back towards the gate line, looking back towards the entry. Really dramatic skylights within that canopy. And we really are i uh, quite excited about the natural light opportunities that will flood down through that VT shaft. Moving through to the next station at Wollongabba, uh, you know, this, this really will revitalise this precinct in this part of the city. Uh, a really evocative architecture uh, that's going to become the heart of a new community in this location. The connection back to the stadium, back to the Gabba, is really a fundamental part of our thinking and our design. Uh, in this environment. Uh, 18,000 passengers plus are probably going to use this station on game day. So that's the number of people we need to move through within one hour uh, after major events in that location. So again, the typology quite straightforward with the cut and cover box central to the station and then connecting in to the mine caverns at either end. Everything in this station is set up around speed, efficiency, and the most direct connection we possibly can have from that underground environment uh, up to surface level. Uh, moving through uh, the VT shaft, this is a view at the GABA that when you're coming off the escalators, there's a really uh, excellent connection back out into the precinct. You can see your destination. As you're moving through that environment, you can make decisions about where you want to go to, and they're highly visible. And I think this is a, a very uh, similar view to some of the views that we looked at on Sydney Metro earlier, where that visual connection from inside to outside and the way that natural light will come through the canopy roof uh, is really front of mind for us in our design work. Moving through to Albert Street, uh, first new station in 120 years. This is a view looking from the station entry back towards Queen Street Mall. So that pedestrianised mall, that's probably the best example in Australia of how pedestrianisation can happen in a CBD. Uh, we are going to actually continue that down 
uh, Albert Street. So a number of the city blocks that are already shut off in the street uh, just outside the Experience Centre here will be uh, redeveloped. They'll be subtropical. They'll be really high quality, lush, landscaped environments that customers and, and, and people just using the city can occupy and really enjoy. Uh, we've talked about the, the Albert Street station in a bit of detail already. Uh, just to reinforce again that, that typology, the organisation, we've got the fully mined cavern, really great distribution of passengers below ground. It is going to be a simple, straightforward, intuitive station to use. The major entry at the southern end on that corner of Murray Street and Albert Street and then the second entry uh, just up beside Elizabeth Street. So the connection back into the city uh, from this new station is really going to be fantastic. And finally, the northern station within the tunnel section. So this is Roma Street. Uh, and I think this is a really fantastic image again that just gets across those ideas and those themes around civic presence of public transport infrastructure. We've pulled the building right to the street edge. It's extremely prominent. It's going to be extremely straightforward uh, for customers to enter, understand where they want to go to and move through uh, to the mode of transport they want to use. The, the cross section on Roma Street, it's deceptively simple actually. You can see all of the uh, existing platforms that are connected into the existing concourse. So every mode of transport connects into that clear uh, spine. And then the new VT shaft that connects vertically uh, on the left hand side of the image down to the underground station. Simple in section, but very complex in three dimensions. Uh, you can see the bottom of the page is the, the mine cavern. So that's a 300 meter long excavation below ground. We've got vertical shafts to the left hand side for emergency egress, uh, a major services building to the right hand side for all of our heavy mechanical and electrical plant and then centre of the image is the main VT shaft that connects uh, all of the front of house areas up to street level. I think you know the experience moving through that shaft arriving at Roma Street it's really going to fundamentally change that experience of using public transport in Brisbane. So this, that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed the presentation. I've certainly enjoyed uh, talking through the aspects of uh, our work and the project today and I hope you enjoy the rest of Science Week. Thank you.